MJ17 P42Q1 Define Gravitational Strength A cheating way to kind of define this is to know the relationship between force and gravitational field strength, which is G. I know we always have MG, G is a constant, but G is really gravitational field strength. And here we can assume it's not, it may not be constant, but we know it's going to be force divided by mass. That is our definition. So we can say this is going to be the gravitational force. Force per unit mass. Basically saying, how strong is the feel of this planet or mass? So in part two, we say now we have a mass of a spherical comet of radius 3.6 radius, approximately 1 times 10 to the 13 kg. Wow, very heavy. Eh? Assuming the comet has a constant density, Calculate the gravitational field strength on the surface of the comet. So our friend, our comet, is going to look like this. Perfect round shape. And there's going to be a field around it. It basically looks like, look like a charge, except this is a gravitational field, so this is M. And it's attractive, right? The field, so we point towards the mass. So if any anybody else come near, it'll be attracted to this comet. So you got to think of what's the equation for field strength, the small g. This will be gm over r square. And where are we again? On the surface of the comet. Not flying in space some far away galaxy, far, far away. You are, the, you are a dot on the surface of the comet. And you're asking, what is the field strength? So you need to, this r here, this small r, is the distance from center to the position wherever you are. So from center is, I guess I put another dot, black dot, tiny black dot. That will be the center. Oh man, I just deleted the whole thing. Oh, let's draw it again. Center to the surface. That is going to be the radius of the comet itself. So we're going to put here G is going to be, what's our G again? Constant. 6.67, right? Times 10 to the negative 11. Times the mass. What's the mass? Oh, the very heavy mass, right? We just mentioned that. 10 to the 13 kg. Very good. Everything in SI units. Divide by the radius. So 3.6 kilometers. So we should put that 10 to the 3 kilo, right? Kilo is 10 to 3. Okay, yes. Square. This will give us a value of... You know, I'm just going to write on the answer line. 5.1 times 10, negative 5. That's how we can get this value for our comet. Two marks. Final answer. Equation. If you knew this equation. It's good to make a list, by the way, to for all your gravitation equations. Because I know this chapter has a lot of equations, especially with circular motion. So make a list. Take an A4 paper, fold it in half, write everything there. Right, part two. A probe is having a weight 960 on Earth and it lands on the comet. Use your answer to determine the weight of the probe on the surface of the comet. Well, how do we know that? On Earth, uh, I mean, the only equation we know for weight is FMG, I guess. Let's write, that, let, let's write it down first. MG. On Earth, <clears throat> on Earth, this is the weight on Earth. It's going to be 960. I don't know what the mass is. Oh, no. Never mind. Uh, this is for planet Earth, 9.81. We could find the mass. Okay, let's good. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. So 960 divided by 9.81. About 97.86 kg. Quite heavy. Sounds about right. So on Earth. Now on Comet, how heavy is it? Weight again. Mass times a new G of the Comet. So this weight will be, I guess you could substitute in, right? Um, w over G, but that might be already calculated it. So I'll just write it out again. 960 over 9.81 is from the Earth. Okay, this value is here. Times the G of the comet. Don't forget, we are now landing on the comet. So we have a different fuel strength already. So this is going to be 5.1 times 10, negative 5, which is what we calculated earlier. 
this would give us a total of hmm what would be this one 5.0 times 10 negative 3 newton strictly speaking it's 4.99 but i have to wear self can la okay la 25.0 times 10 negative 3 if you want to write out the original it will be 4.99 one for final answer, one mark here. One for having ah, this calculation either separately or together. That's one mark. Okay, let's see part two. Let's go on to part three. Oh, C. Oh my goodness. Wait, 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 wait. What's this shape? I thought our comet is a sphere. That's what we assumed, a spherical comet. But it may not always be comet. In fact, in real life, your comets are probably looking more like this. So now you have another comet, approximately 4.5 km length and a width of 2.6 km. Wow, how do you how do you do that? Okay, length, uh, 4.5 km. That's gonna be from here to here. Width, I guess, is a shorter one from here to here. It's gonna be 2.6 km. Mm. All right. Suggest one similarity and one difference between the gravitational fields at the surface of this comet and the other comet in B. So previously in B, our comet is a nice sphere. Kind of like this. And it has a radial gravitational field. Radial means like radius like that. It goes out from the center outwards. So that's the old field. What about this comet's field? How would you draw this comet's field? Look at... <laughs> I think what you could draw is make sure that whatever you draw, that line is perpendicular to the surface. So you see the, the sphere on the left? I draw a little perpendicular sign. You gotta do the same thing here for this comet. So maybe we do like that. Perpendicular, right? Okay, I'll draw a few more. This one is here. This one will be somewhere here. This will be somewhere here. I'm just drawing some random sides here. Oh, but it will curve a bit. Mm, so maybe it's somewhere here here because the lines cannot cross each other but there's so many lines there okay now you get the idea well i kind of drew the whole thing <laughs> okay so what's the difference uh all similarity something same is that these are both gravitational fields right and gravitational fields are generally what we call attractive fields like any mass comes in they'll be attracted so we usually draw them this way we draw the arrows to show where a mass would go if you put a mass it will go towards it can i do the same for the comet yeah i can draw arrows everywhere there's a bit too many few lines to do them but you can see what i'm trying to do arrows that will attract things to the comet so let's write out the first similarity so both fields talk about the direction point towards the comet or the comet surface. Uh. And this indicates that this is an attractive field. Anything that comes close will be attracted or pull towards it. Then we have the difference. So what's the difference? Well, the main difference is the pattern. Uh. If you look on the left side, this nice pattern is called a radial field. The one on the right is called... I don't even know what to call it. I call it a random field. <laughs> random? So the comet... Uh, comet in or the second comet, the comet in C, is or has a non radial field. Usually, in uh, electric field, gravitational field, there's only a few type of fields there's radial, there's uniform field. I think that's it. Uh. Radial or uniform and random. Uh. Non-radial, non-uniform. It's just all over the place like this one here. Okay. This is um, two marks. So if you got any of these similarities, that's one each. One here, one here. Guess a B1. Give yourself a B1. Okay. So that's all for this question then. Uh, interesting study on how weird fields could look like, like this. And that's all for this question. I will see you in the next video.